I am very proud of the work the foundation does. I'm very proud of the hundreds of thousands of people who support the work of the foundation. Since its founding, the Clinton Foundation has raised at least $42 million from foreign governments, and according to an analysis by CBS News, at least $170 million from foreign organizations, companies, and individuals. Our guests are about to tackle the issues of money, reports, stories, issues, and innuendo surrounding the Clinton Foundation and Hillary Clinton's drive to become the next president. Our first guest authored a strong defense of the Clinton Foundation in an article published today on the Newsmax website, one that is also linked to by the Drudge Report and talked about at Politico.com. He also happens to be the CEO of our parent company, Newsmax Media. It's a pleasure to welcome Chris Ruddy back to the program. And on the opposing side of matters, former Republican congressman from Illinois and president of Flanagan Consulting, Michael Patrick Flanagan. Gentlemen, thanks both for being here today. Ed, great to be on with you. Michael? Chris, you're getting an awful lot of attention here today. And oddly enough, people are saying, wait a minute now, because you point out in your op-ed, if you will, that there's really nothing here at this point. It's time to let it go, let it undertake the investigation. But there's other people saying that, come on, Chris, there's all kinds of breadcrumbs here that we have to follow. Well, certainly there's a lot of smoke. And um, I, I'm one who believes that just because you have smoke doesn't mean there's a real fire, certainly in this case. And, and Ed, I know it's a contrarian view for a conservative like myself and for any conservative to start saying something nice about the Clintons. It's, it's rare. But I do think the Clinton Foundation has done tremendous work. I have praised President Clinton for the work he did. You know, most post-presidents, they go to the, the, the corporate uh, boardrooms, the board of directors, the golf course, travel the world as a former American leader. Uh, Bill Clinton has chosen another path, and we have to admire and respect that. And uh, he's made an enormous contribution to the goodwill of America around the world. He's extremely popular. And um, I think when you look at all of the allegations that have been made so far that have been in this book called The Clinton Cash by Peter Schweitzer, there's not any evidence in the book that they've actually done anything wrong. All right, Michael, then to you, because from other sides and from the other side of this conversation, they're saying, boy, there's an awful lot here, and there's the old smoke and fire argument. Well, the Clintons have, have helped Mr. Ruddy and others get, get sucked into the vortex of their argument, and it's the argument that they almost always win, and that is, prove to me where I've done something wrong, and if you can't prove it, then everything I've done is right. That's not exactly the case here. And the, we have to look at the intentions. And, and people like Mr. Ruddy, who have given large amounts of money to make the world a better place, and the Clinton Foundation, which has done some good things, there's no question about that. What is the intention of the larger people, the Saudi princes and the others who have given money, who don't give money generally to make the world a better place? And why are they giving money to the Clinton Foundation? And what is their intention? I would tell you the Clintons well, either let them believe that there will be a pedal influence or they actually are peddling influence. We don't know which yet, and we probably are never going to know, so let's just assume that there's no influence peddling going on. But these guys still came with that expectation. I think it's a fair assumption. And when you're running for president, well, Michael, I think that you are allowed to look at these motives. I'm sorry, please. Okay, let him go ahead and answer back. i got about a minute 15 left. Chris, go ahead. Well, my, Michael, you've been, you've been a congressman. You know that... People love rubbing shoulders with congressmen. It doesn't mean they would donate to a cause you're involved in or a charity. Just because you're there, you're a congressman. You imagine the influence an American president as popular Bill, as Bill Clinton, the number of individuals that would like to be associated with him and his work. I don't want to question their, their motive and why they donated. Uh, there are some issues they're saying because when Hillary was Secretary of State, if you look at those, it's pretty clear. She did not use her influence as Secretary of State to change U.S. policy to benefit the donors. She couldn't have. She needed, in the case of the uh, uranium mines, she needed nine federal agencies in the White House to sign off on it. And it would be just unbelievable to think that she was able to get the Obama administration to do something to help the Clinton Foundation. I got about, um, so Chris, I got about 30 seconds the, left. I got about 30 seconds left, so really quick, Michael, let me get it from you then with a last shot on this. Do we need to see that smoking gun that we haven't seen yet? I, I once again say, I don't know whether you're going to find your smoking gun or whether you're going to find the quid pro quo. And what my point is, is that it doesn't matter. 
the, the, the motives are what matters, and the people who gave and the people who took and the amounts that the Clinton Foundation spends on themselves or others or what they do. And, and let the numbers speak for themselves. Okay. But until that nobody is fully, nobody fully rolled out, that the someone Clinton running Foundation. for president, you're allowed to look at their motives. And we will have to do that, gentlemen, and call that the last word. We're out of time. Chris's commentary can be read by going to Newsmax.com. Check under the tab Newsfront. You'll find in defense of the Clinton Foundation, Chris Rudigan, Michael Patrick Flanagan. Thanks for being with us.